in Phoenix, Arizona. Today I got my very special guest, known as Doc Reggie, Funk Doc, Funk hey. Doctor Spot, hey. also Cut Killer. <laughs> I got Get Red Man homework. here today. How you feeling? How you doing? Everything good. How you? <laughs> so, would you like to go by just Doc? Yo, just call me Doc. Okay, Doc. Yeah, Jersey. Uh, thank you for being Jersey here. Jersey boy. Yes, Jersey yes, girl. That's what I'm a, absolutely, about. absolutely, absolutely. I told you, I'm so happy to be with my East Coast family that's because right. Jersey, Jersey people, there's nothing like them, right? Say no more. Ain't nothing like Ain't nothing Jersey. Nothing like a Jersey person. That's Ain't right. Nothing like a tri-state person. Exactly. Okay? We, we built but, differently. But one thing about Jersey, we had to stand out from the tri-state. <laughs> Because we always got considered New York. Right. So that's why we're so different, because we're different from New York. Well, you know what's funny? On the West Coast, everyone kind of branches, puts us together. So when I say Jersey, like, oh, New York, I'm like, yeah, no, 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 we no, separate. Jersey. But if I meet a New Yorker in Vegas, I'm like, yo, come on, what's exactly, up? Exactly, exactly. Okay, so I appreciate you being here. I met you once at a Chamber of Cannabis event. You were DJing. Yeah. It was downtown. Big up to the Chamber family out yep. there in Vegas. And that's what I kind of got into that atmosphere because I was learning more about the conscious cannabis consumption and okay. I was learning more about ways to heal yourself through the plant okay. more than just getting high and everything I used to do when I was younger right right so I know you've taken it to a lot of different levels um, but I kind of want to take it back to the beginning because I knew you were born in Newark expel from Montclair not expel I, I quit or just Montclair you were like fuck it yeah I went after my music industry I went after okay. my music career so you know, it was like either I do school or I do this music, and I chose this music. So you started DJing as Cut Killer. Right. That was your first name. Yep. How do you get into music in general? I wanted to DJ first. I started DJing at 12, and uh, I, I wanted to be a professional DJ, and then I ended up rapping, so. Okay. Yeah, so I guess it worked out and shit. Is Eric Sermon, is that how it came in? Yeah, I, um, I linked up with Eric Sermon at a young age, at like 18, 19 years old. And I was on the road since 19, and, uh, you know, I just got my tutelage from EPMD. And that was a group that I always wanted to, that was a group that I actually looked up to as well, that helped spark that little idea that I can rap. So, uh, yeah, I, 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 owe it to, I owe a lot to them, you know. And KRS-1, Slick Rick, and Ice Cube, and NWA. Those are the ingredients that make me. Um, first of all, I wanted to give you a blunt, if you accept it. I am making a strain. So my farm is in Northern California. It's Sierra Family Farms. It's sun grown and outdoor. So I'm trying to figure out what to mix. I'm using an apricot mimosa as a base. And I'm trying to figure out what to mix it with. But I have Northern Lights. I have a Poison Gushers and some other shit. So I'm gonna light up an apricot mimosa. Do you have something that you wanna light up? or what? Uh, You know what, I, I don't really smoke that much. What like No more. Because I'm in, like I haven't rolled a full blunt in two years. Really? Yeah. Um, but I hit a two. I might hit a one hit a quarter every three months or whatever. Um, but I I hit I hit your blunt. I, I will hit your joint. Are you I sure? The, yeah, no I pressure. Hit. No, no. I know. I don't never pressure myself. I actually myself. wanted. I thought I just wanted kind of like a taste test from you because this Absolutely. is going to be the genetic, and I love it. Everyone says it's say no more. Pretty good. So I'm gonna let you hit it first. Say no more. There you go. Why you ain't hitting your own no. shit? Well, I wanted you to hit it first. I didn't okay. know he was weird about it. Tasty. You like it? It's tasty. I'm not. I'm not big with those kind of leaves. This is a hemp wrap. I mean, yeah, yeah. Because uh, yeah. I switched from Dutch's. I was trying to be good. No, no. I'm, I'm getting better. <laughs> no, exactly. But it, it's tasty. Okay. It good. don't make me cough. It ain't. It ain't got that harsh. Right. Yeah. So they on to something. You on to something. Okay. So this goes back to like obviously how high, legendary. Right. The, the burning question is: Were y'all smoking real bud in the movie? No, not in the beginning. <laughs> but like halfway down the movie, we would hit have some because they was giving us a lot of herb. And that herb shit is right, nasty Right, like what were you fuck. smoking instead? Because there was, was no It was herb, back then. it was natural herbs, but that shit nasty as fuck. So, after we do our scene or whatever, we'll go smoke something to get that taste out. You know what I'm talking okay. about? Okay, because I'm thinking, I'm like, were y'all smoking K2? Like, what the fuck fake weed were they oh, giving no, y'all, no, you know? Oh, no, no, horrible. Because I'm like, I... It was literally herb all in the bag, bag that you could buy from a store. You know, so we uh like just real herb. Yeah, just real <laughs> herb. It was real herb. Honestly, it was straight real herb. So they bought it and they rolled the they rolled the joints actually had them rolled already and we was just like it. 
So you and Method Man, what was your like your favorite scene that you did with him in that movie? Do you have like a favorite one? Um, I like when he was doing a. You know, the speak. Smoke, I, yeah, God. that's everybody's favorite <laughs> part in the movie. That's one of my favorite ones too. But I like when he held the the blunt over my face when I was asleep. Oh, okay. And when the music was playing, oh, okay, like gotcha. boom, 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 and I woke up. I was like, oh shit. And you know it's crazy because if you look back, he was really getting into the science of the weed before we knew about the science of the weed. Remember, right. he's like, this one cures glaucoma, this one does that, you know. Right. But like back then, no one, everyone's like, ha ha ha, and now we're like proving it, you know. Exactly, big facts. I know you got deep into cannabis and the healing aspects of it, but you're also doing a political um, part of it as well. So Absolutely. I just want to kind of talk about the United Empowerment Party. Yes, ma'am. So how'd you get into it? I know I picked up a pamphlet. I was reading about it. So can you talk a little bit about it? Yeah. Um. Well, in a nutshell. It's just like Republican Party, uh, Democratic Party, and you have the UEP, United Empowerment Party, and what we're trying to do is just galvanize everyone. All right, we gotta we gotta unify to communicate on what we want as an industry. Because here's the thing: like you got Republican Party, Democratic Party, right? They're able to come together, galvanize within their community, and and state claims what they want change in in their community if 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 your community is suffering from the war on drugs or certain things you could come together as a republican party democratic party and try to make change um the beer industry the liquor industry they have they shit together they know how to grease the right palms as far as political figures to get what they need the tobacco industry as well it's like they got their shit together. They know who degrees, who palms to talk to, who babies to kiss in the political industry to keep their industry going and flourishing. Right. No matter how many people is killing. Well, with the cannabis industry, we don't have that. We don't have that. Um, we still, it's still a scheduled one, first of all. That's my goal with uh, Go this. Go federal? Yeah. This, this one of my goals is to deschedulize cannabis. Okay. Right. But back to what I was saying, we don't have that. We don't have that unification with each other as a as a business. Even though we a bi billion dollar business, we're not unified like the liquor or the tobacco industry. And that's why, just as just as much money as. The tobacco industry is making or the liquor industry they paying a lot of money to shut this industry down right just like fda they don't want to see this happen because mm -hmm. we got to look at cannabis besides recreational we got to look at it as medicine this is a medicine it's not nothing just to be smoking recreational it is a medicine it's fun to smoke we get high off the tac components of it but there's over 400 components to this plant there's so many components to this plant, your kids' kids won't be around to see the full strength of a cannabis plant. It's over 400 components and we only discovered five. So you can imagine the years and years it's going to take for discoveries to really put this plant up forth and say it's full potential. But here's the thing, once it goes federal, then what? We got the small moms and pops wiped out, we got a lot of... Uh, legacy wiped out. We got a lot of people that have been putting in work for years wiped out because once you start buying what granddaddy purple at a CVS Then who the fuck is going to need a legacy right. and we want to we want to we want to strengthen our com What UEP is about is strengthening the minds of this industry like listen We're not in it for the uh, Profit that's one thing I can say we don't make any money off the plant we in it for the strict purpose of it. And anything you do in life that's purpose, you will profit later on. But we're no way in there trying to make profit off this plan. We only make money through funding that people that want to fund us and love what we're doing. So if people want to get involved, they can donate? They could go, they could donate, they could go right to our IG page, um, at United Empowerment Party um, or IG, or um, hit us up on our website, www dot united empowerment party party dot org and see the work that we're doing like we writing bills and shit you know what i'm talking about we we implementing programs and we implementing what's up red okay we implementing programs that's not setting people up for failure failure excuse me 
Because a lot of people throw this word social equity around. Like, what the fuck is a social equity? Like, that's like the welfare word of the industry. Like, me and my sister, well, my sister over here, she, Safita Artist Mills, she the president of UEP. She came up with another term of instead of social equity. She said equity empowerment. And that's what we need to do. Start empowering our people from white, black, brown, Asian. It don't matter. If you're in this industry, empower yourself not only with the knowledge of this industry, but even with the linguistics. It's so much like it's so much that need to be done besides expungement clinics, besides uh, tapping into the areas that's been affected by war on drugs and shit, helping them communities, making sure the dispensaries that's coming in these cities is not just building the dispensary and, and not s help serve the community. You make money off the people, but you don't want to help the community. Right. Like, no one is holding these people accountable. Right. No one is holding these fucking politicians accountable for using this industry as a stepping stone to get voted in. They say, all right, we're going to do this for the industry. And then when they get voted in, they don't do shit. Who's holding them accountable? Right. Nobody. So we put a foot on motherfuckers next. It's not being fucking accountable for this industry. Like big facts. Like, I'm sorry I get a little perturbed no, like about it. it. But you know what? It's, it was my duty because I'm a God-fearing man. Right? And believe me, I'm a hustler too. I'm, a, I'm, I'm straight out of Newark, New Jersey. And I had so much money, like I could have had five to 600 grand in endorsements. Endorsing other people's brands, saying I'm part of their brand. I don't have a strain. I don't have no endorsements going on. I turned down all that money. And at a time when I wasn't even this knowledgeable of the industry, but God had a plan for me. He was like, no, nope, I don't want you to do that. I'm like, God, I could use this bread right now. You know what I'm talking about? But he's like, I got something else I want you to be a part of. And it's going to be more helping people. And believe me, once you're known for helping people, when you release a brand, it's even going to be more better for you. So I waited and I was obedient. And now I'm here. Sorry that took so long and shit. But no, because I really, um, I learned that helping people is how people become successful, right? Like that's one of the, that's somebody's like quote, a millionaire's quote. By helping people, like exactly. you have to spread the awareness, you have to spread the love, you gotta spread the education because we're better as a unit. Like, like you said, how are we supposed to change these things if we don't all come together? There's what gonna be thousands of people at this kind of event if we all connected towards each other and helped each other with something, we would be able to get stronger. You know what I mean? But here's the thing we come to these cannabis events, right? Like, even in um, Vegas, we go to MJ Biz, right? Yeah, but we go there to just uh. We go there to talk about product, right? We never leave with a solution. All these panels that they be having at these events, they, they, we all sound good. Right. We all sound good displaying our little knowledge on the industry, but we never have a solution booth. Like we never have a panel where, okay, we always mention what's wrong with the industry. We should have panels about educated minds coming together for solutions. And let's start implementing because the solutions that we implement is not going to be solved overnight. It takes years. It takes fucking months to write bills and get that approved by different states. Right. But we're not doing anything. And it's only a matter of time before FDA rolls the fuck in and say, all right, we gave y'all motherfuckers enough time to get y'all shit together. Y'all haven't unified yet to make your own statement as one. So we coming in and now we're selling fucking purple out of Walgreens and CVS. Sorry, y'all had your chance. And that's what it's really gonna be. Look, when you got the CEOs of Coca-Cola, right? And when they sell their shares of, of Coca-Cola and build one of the most expensive, expensive inside grow houses in the country, I mean, in the country, and say, we're looking, their, their, their answer was, why are you building that? Why are you selling your shares of Coke? Then come over here. Because we're going to be the Coca-Cola of the cannabis industry. Watch. And this was like, what, seven years ago? So they sitting in the wings waiting. Right. I met a lady on a plane one time. Don't mean to be. Y'all can hear me over there? Yes, sir. I met, I met a lady on a plane one time, right? And I met her back in like maybe like 2007 and shit. And... She was wondering why a lot of people was coming up to me, talking to me. I was like, yo, I'm about to go to, I said, I do music. I was in a couple of movies. I'm going out to California. I'm flying to California to do a cannabis event. And I said, what do you do? 
because she was sitting in first class next to me. She said, I make billion dollar deals for companies. I was like, wow. And she said, it's funny that you're going to a cannabis event because I'm going to make a big deal for Walgreens right now. And I said, hmm, do tell. She said, well, what right now Walgreens is buying up every piece of land they can to start growing. And they, I said, yeah? She said, yeah, they plan on selling bud over the counter when it goes federal. And this, this was, this was over 12 years ago. What the fuck? I, I, on the plane with this lady. This was 12 years ago. So, I just want to inform everyone out there, like, that's what the United Empowerment Party is about. It's about the strengthening of this industry and preparing the industry. We want to prepare it. We want to, if we deschedulize it right now and have a march, we can march to Washington and deschedulize this shit right now. That'll help us strengthen our way of regulating our own fucking laws and our own uh, procedures, how we want to go about this industry. Instead of letting them do it, letting the state do it, and then throw a bunch of tax on it and killing us with the taxes and shit. Like they're killing us right now. This is what we're doing. Just like any, any political party, right? We need representatives of each state. Right now we got Atlanta, we got Jersey, but we got like what, 40 to 50 more states to go. Okay. So you want to represent your state in a political party? And like I said, we're no different from the Republican Party or the Democratic Party. We can actually put someone in the president's chair one day and put someone in the White House in a seat that understands the fucking wow, industry. Wow, that's fucking powerful. Yeah, that understands the industry. So if you want to be a part of that, you want to represent a state, please hit us up at www.unitedempowermentparty.org and represent your city and your state. And let's get this shit moving, yo, before it's too late. Fuck yeah. Good job. That's like a powerful ass thing. Hey, I did Isn't I, that crazy how life takes you? Because like, would you ever think that you would be in this position, like coming from where and weed was like a fucking war on drugs and shit? To exactly. Now, like, and, and, and believe me, I have to educate myself through doing, doing these meetings and little panels. But I learned a lot from my sister over there and shit. She taught me a lot and... And we, we overlook it like this industry is not political. It's political like a motherfucker, man. And it's not giving our people a fair chance, even in this industry, from a, a plant that does, belongs to us anyway. They're not giving us a right. fair chance, so. Okay, so are you a dog whisperer? I saw something with Caesar Milan that you like trained your dog, because I got two pit bulls. Oh yeah, well my dog was the main dog of the show. Okay. His name was Daddy. If you go back on the previous episodes, my dog was the main dog of the show when it first started. His name was Daddy. And at the time, Caesar Milan, Caesar Milan uh, only had a couple of stars, dogs. He had my dog, he had Tashina Arnold dog, and he had Will Smith and Jada Pinkett dog. Okay. And then, and then he trained my dog while I was on the road, and then my dog got so familiar with him, he started getting well known, and they offered him a show, and he took my dog along with him, and they made history. <laughs> Do you still have any dogs now? No, no, my pit died, like maybe like five years ago, but he lived a longer life than the pit should have, you know? Yeah, mine are 13 right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're the best. They take sea moss every day, they chill it. Oh, good, good shit. Do you have any tips for prolonging your masters or owning your music masters? Tips for prolong. Hey, listen, just own your fucking masters. Here's the thing, try not to use no samples, and it's all in the paperwork. Stand your ground and everything is in your contract. Own your fucking master.
box. Um, do you everybody. have anybody specific that you want to see or that you're excited to? No, anybody really I don't already seen. It's just a, it's just an honor to be around my people again, just you know doing some music with them and having fun. That's what we do. I mean, you work with hundreds and probably thousands of people by now, but like, is there? I obviously met the man you love, but is there like a top three? people that you want to work with that you enjoy all the time every time it's like I want to work with my brother Q-Tip I love working with my brother KRS-1 um, I want to work with Slick Rick on something too I want to work with Ice Cube on something too like me and him ain't never do nothing like I'm ready to that's air crazy shit out that y'all never did nothing yeah that's one of my mentors too like I'm ready to beat something yeah. down I'm ready to beat a beat down for Ice Cube <laughs> you already know they already know the work they already know I'm not coming to play no games Okay, so Power Book 2, you play Theo Rollins, which is McLean's brother. So it, was that a different kind of role for you because it was kind of more serious in a way? Or how was, uh, that, how was it for you? It was, it was good. Uh, it, was, uh, it, was, it, was, it was fun because my brother was on there and I get to be his brother in, in, on the show. But I walked away from Power. I walked away from power after the second episode because I wasn't getting the jab. Everybody on the show had to have the jab, and I wasn't with it. So uh, I walked away. <laughs> and sometimes that means that's that's what I'm saying. You have to stand your ground. Like would power have been a, a, a game changer for me? Yes. The money was good. It's a it's a well known show. That could have helped my career, but is my is my health uh, less important than being on the show? Fuck no, my health is more important to me, and I, I had to make a choice. Yeah. Either I was going to sacrifice myself with this third war order bullshit, or I just walk away, and I walk away. I'm glad we're on the same page, Red. Hey. I just wrote an article about Pfizer getting into cannabis and about, you know, how a billion dollar. So that's why I now support the family farms and people that I know. Exactly. You know, they. I know my grower. I know they're putting intention in it and I know they're doing it in the right way. So I'm not. Because I'm, I'm, I'm ingesting it every day. I have to be conscious now, right? I can't Good be just you. high as fuck and not knowing what the fuck I'm putting in my body. Exactly. So that's why I do a lot of health and wellness and shit like that. Good so you, I'm girl. glad you stood your ground. Absolutely. And I'm glad you. And thank you for sharing that. So, was there ever a time that you actually wanted to give up on music or acting, um, or did you always enjoy it? Uh, yeah, just last week I wanted to. <laughs> looked at uh, other uh, other artists that I I admire. They're still doing music. They're still on the road doing shows. So I'm looking at them like, okay, it's embedded in me to really put music out because the more music I put out, the more I can help people. Right. But it do get tiring. Uh, my goal is to be more behind the scenes and directing. That's my, that's my goal. I want to direct more and that's what I'm doing now. I'm directing uh, little uh, shows and like the dad roast. The dad roast, check it out. It, we shooting content on it in Seattle. Um, and the dad roast show is about the culture of cannabis and the world and the world of dabbing. Because no one spots like that. No one spotlights I'm dabbing. dabbing. That's just exactly. A lot. I'm gonna wait till I'm done. You might as well be saying it's crack, right? right? a glass to their mouth, the shit on the Right. So the show is about the culture, the culture of cannabis, and dabbing, and other things that relate to cannabis. Okay. Yeah. It's called a dab roast. It's very good. Are you living in Jersey still? Yes. Okay. That's my favorite thing about Jersey. Uh, is what makes me. Um, I'm able to. Yeah, I'm, I'm able to still go in my hood. I love my hood. New Jersey is one of the best places on the planet. Um, and I only had to go to Newark to go to court. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need to stay the hell out of trouble, girl. But um, yeah, but uh, New York, New Jersey, the best place on the planet. I love my city, and we do 
so much for our city. And we actually, shout out to my boy Dude Ardu that became the first councilman of our city that came out the rap game, the first person that was in the rap industry that hold a political position. And he's from Dora. Um, actually, in Jersey period, my sister and I and a gang, a team of us, we wrote the first bill in Newark that was the first in all the states and it's called the Technical Assistance Program. And this program that we implemented, uh, it was certified last year and it's the first bill of its kind in all the states. No other states have it. And we're helping people, uh, we're helping legacy. We're helping people that want to be educated in this industry to have a chance to learn about the ins and outs of this industry and the history of the cannabis industry. And not only that, help them sustain the knowledge to own a, 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 a license. Because a lot of these programs, I ain't gonna say no names, one of them in New York, that's giving out licenses to people who come out of jail without education. Right. And what happens when you have that? You have people that comes out of jail or whatever they're giving the licenses to without the education and having them to fail, set them up to fail just so they can say, we did it. We threw, sexual, we threw social equity around. Yeah, here's your social equity right there. We know this person ain't gonna sustain the license. We're gonna end up taking the license back anyway. Our technical assistance program is not like that. We're not setting anyone up for failure. You take the test and you keep studying and you take the test as many times as you want. You're able to get a license and on top of that, we have uh, up to $250,000 in grants to help people. And it's the first one of its kind. It's called the Technical Assistance Program in Jersey. Look us up. Yes, congratulations. Yeah, absolutely. I feel good about that. I, yeah, you should because yeah, you're yeah. really doing shit. And it takes a lot to do that. Like people don't realize the mental, you know. Do you do something for your mental peace? Like, yeah. Um, I pray. Okay. My mental peace, I, I have to pray. I live alone, and when you live alone, the enemy try to work on you, <laughs> but I pray about it, and that's what that's my release. As far as family, is there anything that you're teaching your kids that you didn't learn? Um, yes. Growing up? I think everyone, parents, should teach their kids how to love themselves. Amen. It all starts from within. Um, my parents didn't know how to do it. Your parents probably didn't know how to do it. There wasn't, there, they, his parents probably didn't know how to do it because they wasn't taught how to love themselves. They wasn't taught the full awareness and the potential of themselves right. back in the day. So I wasn't able to learn from my parents. Right. When, you, when you hold yourself accountable, when you hold yourself transparent, when you're, when you're able to be vulnerable, I love being vulnerable now. Like everyone, the social media is fucking y'all up because it's teaching y'all how to win, but they're not teaching you how to build. On the social media, winning is having money and flashy chicks and flashy shit without the ingredients of the hurt and the pain and the suffering. That is what build you to a stronger person. And everyone is scared to be vulnerable. Well, we were taught that you can't show that as, you know what I mean, exactly. growing up. So that's exactly. breaking those barriers. Ex right. We have to break the generational ignorance. Yeah. I'm after generational wealth, but I'm here to break generational ignorance with my kids. And even right now, like my kids, they, they like they little internet and they like being on their phone. But I teach my daughter and my sons and all of them, I, I let them know, like, listen, you got to have pain. Your pain is power. And my daughter, I mean, my sons, they got it. My daughter is getting it. She's in college. I love her because she's like me. But she is now learning that she is not made to be liked by everyone. Right. She has to learn that I not only have to learn from other people's pain and my pain, but I have to learn to be accountable for my shit. And that is what a lot of young generation is missing and being accountable. They're too busy doing this instead of saying doing this. Right. Once I started doing this, I was like, life changes. So, remember, in any argument or any situation with, between two people, the shortest thing between two people is communication. Once, if, in, if 
if two people on a disagreement, no one is right because it's always a 30%. There's always a 30% of that person being accountable for what's going on. No matter if this person is totally dead wrong in your eyes, there's a 30% of you as well contributing to this situation. So we all have to learn to communicate first, be accountable, no, communicate first, be vulnerable, then, then be accountable, then be loving and understanding. You know, sometimes- That's, some, a, that's a long road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been learning it though, I'm good. Exactly, <laughs> but here's the thing before I get out of here, like I teach my kids, like sometimes when a person is being aggressive and you have a you have the right everyone has the free will and that's something else i teach my kids too that you parents must teach their kids that pride is a sin why pride is a sin because pride don't allow you to learn right. from each other mm-hmm. pride don't allow you to be vulnerable to sit back and say you know what i could be wrong right so once we push that pride to the side like i tell my kids like push your pride to the side if a person is being aggressive you have the opportunity to be aggressive back like okay well well fuck you well fuck you or fuck you that just you know where right Right. So here's the thing. And that Somet- ends up good. Sometimes when you let a person just talk, mm-hmm. sometimes they just want to be heard. I'm reading this book. It's called How to Be Friends. How to Be Friends and Influence People. And um, that's one of the things. It says, you know, when you're wrong, admit it immediately. But also, like, you don't have to be aggressive back. You no. know, and coming from Jersey, exactly. Moving to Vegas, I was so Jersey. People are like, you gotta calm down. Like, people don't act like you out here. I'm like, what you mean? They're like, why are you screaming? I'm like, I'm just talking. Exactly. <laughs> And you got to show interest. You know? you know now how- I've learned patience. And exactly. it's like, it's been amazing for me because I could have lost out on some really good opportunities because of my anger or because I wanted to quick jump or whatever. Not even knowing the whole thing. And don't take shit personal. That's what I tell people too. Right. Like, it's not all about you. Don't take it personal. Everyone's got their own shit, you know? So it's not about being, yeah. when you communicate it, you would realize it's not about you. you it's know? Not, that's right. And it's not about being submissive. It's about actually, here's the thing. When you're meeting people, you never know where they like from, where they, what they, what's going on in their life, right? Right. You never know if that person might be dealing with a kid in a wheelchair when they go home, or their wife cheated on them, or whatever. You got to, uh, you got to, uh, he gave you the wrap it up. Damn, I'm like, uh, no, no, we have a good, like, this is what Jersey do. So I'm going to put it to you like this. Whenever you run in, whatever, whoever you run into out there, just learn to listen first. You never know what that person is going through, and they could be going through a lot. That's what I teach my kids. I teach my kids, push the pride to the side and respect yourself, love yourself, and respect others. Damn. That was good. Yeah. Appreciate you. Thank yeah, you for being here. I appreciate hey. it. It was nice to chop it up. Hey, yeah, that's what I like. Like this, yo, check this out. Yo, I'm like Showtime boxing after dark And we, I got bags like shopping carts Who gonna stop the shark? Nobody I take a big fish and gut him to caviar Hood down, I know how my pistol sound My bullets too pop high gets around Flew about two blocks then it hit your crown On the king, there's no fingerprints allowed Gangster, nah nigga, I'ma break some off Shotgun same size of a bass guitar My name's Jamal from How High I rock New Jersey now, why? I got the crack it's like webster trying to fight with shaq when i restaurant this and take it out back something like us taking over iraq same thing with more connects than nine next reggie you know my name i'm with who kisses sliding like he's ready uh-huh. you know i was gonna do that did you nah, you're doing it like this yeah my name is reggie yo